Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild, a channel, a platform, a community entirely dedicated to inspiring and empowering people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. Now I do have slightly frozen cheeks and I feel like I'm going to dribble. <laughs> it's very, very cold, uh, but I wanted to come outside and shoot this video. It's a slightly different style to uh, the style I've previously produced, but my goal is to run through the favorite gear or my favorite gear that I used throughout the 2023 season and look at the stuff that I am unquestionably going to be carrying through with me into the 2024 hiking season. Now 2023 was a little bit of a bonkers year for me. I headed out and did seven different trails as well as leading walks up and down the country and lots of other things going on as well. Um, so if you're interested in the documentary films that I have shot during the 2023 season, here they come. So I started in April with the Afric Kintail Way in Scotland and then headed on to the Sky Trail in Scotland as well. I dropped down to Snowdonia to complete the Snowdonia Way in Wales. I then headed to the Italian Dolomites. Oh my gosh, beautiful place. I fell in love with that as I hiked the Alta Via 1. Shimmied across to Chamonix to hike the oat route from Chamonix to Zermatt. And actually that's a trail I did not complete. It's the first trail I have ever pulled off um, as, a, as a big hike. Uh, uh, but I'm hoping to edit a film from that. And depending on when you're watching this, this is either out or it's not. <laughs> um, then I went across to back to Italy to hike Gran Paradiso or climb Gran Paradiso, which is the highest mountain in Italy. It's actually an alpinist route. Finishing that expedition with Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in Western Europe. And that was in partnership with Adventure Base. That film is all out on my channel. Please check it out. Um, and finally, 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 I headed up to the north of Sweden into the Arctic Circle to hike possibly one of the biggest dreams of a trail I have ever uh, imagined and that was the Kungsleden. Three weeks of hiking through the Arctic wilderness and Lapland, Sami country with reindeer, bears. Um, oh my gosh, it was epic. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that, so I'm going to draw a line. Those are the films that are either out or being edited and this video is hopefully going to offer a little bit of an insight into the gear that I love to have with me during those hikes. So the final thing I want to mention before I offload all of this information and awesome shots for you to enjoy um, is that this video is absolutely not a sales pitch and absolutely not saying that this is the kit that you need to have in order to have an awesome trail experience. So I hike pretty much full time from April to September, October to shoot these documentary films with the exact purpose of what I said at the beginning of this video to inspire and empower people to get outside for mental and physical health. That being said, I did not start with this kit. It is a constant evolution. Some of it I've been given by brand sponsors, but most of it I have purchased myself. I have worn things out, I have replaced them, I have tried to fix things. I've gone through the process just as hopefully you too will. So if you are new to hiking, if you're new to backpacking, if you're new to long distance walking, to trekking, to free hiking, whatever you want to call it, you don't need this kit to get started. Just a simple pair of gym trousers or gym shorts and a wicking top, a couple of layers, waterproof, whatever, you know, the basic kit, bish bash bosh, you're good to go. I started with an old school heavy book backpack. I started with trainers and we all start somewhere. So that's just something that's really important for me to mention. Please do not get hung up on the kit that you need to get out and definitely do not let it become a barrier and an obstacle from stopping you to get outside and enjoy the awesome wild world around us. Right, without further ado, let's dive in to my kit. Actually, when you, dive, when you scuba dive, you don't really do that. You kind of go, what do you do? You go, beep, 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 like a reversing lorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Alrighty, so to kick off this vast and varied list, the main backpack I have used this year is the Z-Pax Arc Haul Ultra. I was gifted this rucksack back in early 2022 and I honestly have used it for pretty much every single multi-day hiking trip since. I absolutely love it. I've added a few bits and bobs to the rucksack, such as the Z-Pax side pocket, which is actually annoyingly the only pocket I can't reach when I'm on the move. Basically, what that means is I can't reach all of my snacks. It's probably a really good thing for me, but I love snacks, so 
I need to figure something out there. On the other hand, the hip belt pockets are fantastic. They are really spacious, very, very hard wearing, just like the entire rucksack. And on one of the sides, I've managed to MacGyver a way to attach my lens bag which basically contains the other lens that I shoot on. So I swap camera lenses as I go throughout the day and it's just super handy having that there easily accessible. But ultimately the rucksack, super light, super hard wearing and honestly it's worked wonders for my back injury as well. I can't rate this rucksack highly enough. I have walked thousands and thousands of miles with it and moving into the 2024 season I will be getting a new pack because this one well, let's just say it's disintegrating in a lot of places. So I've certainly got my use out of this rucksack. Moving on to my tent and sleeping system. Now, for most of my hikes this year, I have used my Hilleberg Ennen tent, which is a three season tent I bought back in late 2018 after using the Hilleberg Acto, which is essentially a four season tent. It's heavier, it's bulkier, and I just didn't need that for most of my expeditions and trips. I love my Enon, it feels like home. It's got a separate inner and outer. It's really quick to put up. It's really easy to take down and it's super light, weighing in at 1.1 kilograms. The only thing I don't love about this tent, literally the only thing, is that it's so prone to condensation. And I will wake up in the morning after a beautiful night's sleep to everything, my sleeping bag, my stove, my clothes, everything being wet. This is not just condensation. This is basically a static monsoon in my tent. It's really, really, really frustrating. And it's honestly led me to question whether I need to change to a different tent design. But for now, otherwise, I can't fault the Hilleberg Ennen. It's been bomb proof, it's traveled the world with me and me being me, I probably will continue to use it into 2024 as well because tents are expensive and I trust this thing with my life and there's definitely something to be said for a tent you know and can trust. Okay, it's confession time, folks. This year, I have done the unconventional. Now, whilst most through hikers go to extreme lengths to cut the weight in their rucksack, I have added to it. So those who really are looking to reduce weight in their rucksack often resort to a three quarter length sleeping mat. So basically it doesn't cover their entire body. For me, on the other hand, I have gone the exact opposite way. And this year I used a Thermarest Neo Air Wide. What I love about this is that I can curl up and it has been amazing for my back injury. I can lie on my sleeping mat and not worry about falling off. I can stretch out and basically it just feels like I'm on a normal double mattress. That's a lie, but it's the next best thing. So once again, this is a piece of kit that has been amazing for me throughout 2023. And I do understand that it's a luxury item, but getting a good night's sleep cannot be overrated. Sleeping equals success. And by having a better night's sleep on the trail, which I undoubtedly have been enjoying, it's translated to me having a better time out and about in the day, putting in more miles, feeling much more comfortable carrying my rucksack and just generally feeling like a much more joyful person when I'm on my adventures. Sticking with the theme of my sleeping system, this year I have used a bunch of different sleeping bags, including the Z-Pax Classic, the Rab Alpine and Thermarest Parsec. But it was the Thermarest, so the Parsec, that has been the most well-traveled. It's cozy, it's a cheery yellow in color, it's dried really fast when it has got a little bit soggy from condensation in my tent. And for the weight, it's really very warm. I love the hood. It goes all the way over my pillow and my head. And yeah, just super, super comfy. I just mentioned pillows. So this is the last thing in my sleeping system. For the last three years, I have used the Cocoon Aircore Microlite, weighing in at just 48 grams. Bonkers. Prior to this, I used to stuff my rucksack underneath my head, put some clothes on top, and that would do for a pillow. But in 2020, just before hiking the Malaveg in the east of Germany, my partner and I headed to Munich. We went into the Globe Trotters shop and we got our hands on these cocoon pillows, which just feel unfathomably soft. There is something about the material that is, it's like candy floss. I, it's, it's so nice. 
<laughs> this sounds like a weird fetish, but honestly, it's a super great pillow. It takes one breath to blow it up and it's so light, you barely even notice it in your rucksack. In fact, sometimes I end up carrying it with me by accident on my day hikes. So yeah, the Cocoon Aircore Microlite pillow. Check it out, folks. Now it's time for my cooking setup. So my stove system. This year, I have gone a little bit alternative and moved away from my awesome Soto Amicus stove. The Soto Amicus has been reliable. I've really enjoyed using it. But I found, thanks to my wonderful brother, an even lighter stove weighing in at just 25 grams. How is that possible? I don't know, but this is the BRS stove. Bought on Amazon, it's super, super small, it's super sturdy, it's super reliable, it comes with its own vibrant green pack pouch, and whilst I still use my Soto River titanium pot to cook in, and of course a gas canister, the BRS stove has been an absolute no-brainer. Initially, I was concerned it was going to break, so I carried my Soto Amicus with me as a backup because having a warm brew and having warm food is such a morale booster. You just don't want your stove to break. But now I 100% trust this 25 gram thing. It's bombproof, honestly. It's really, really well made. And I will definitely be purchasing another one if ever I need to. In fact, I might just do that for a giveaway. So stay tuned on my Patreon community if you'd like to win one of these amazing stoves. That seems like a good chance for me just to say thank you to all of the amazing people who have currently joined my Patreon community. So Patreon is an online platform entirely dedicated for creators just like me. What we do takes a huge amount of time and effort and money and we get so little back from platforms like YouTube. You're never going to become a millionaire through YouTube. So we've got Savvy and we have united on this platform called Patreon. Now I offer all of of my content for free. I'm absolutely passionate about changing lives and I will always keep my content free. That being said, if you've got a spare £3 a month and feel like you can support the creation of these films and support my cause, joining me on Patreon will be absolutely game-changing for me. Patreon essentially is the only way that I can do what I do and without it there would be no wild. There would be no films on YouTube, there would be nothing, it would all have to go. So if you feel like you can join me on Patreon, I will be giving you something back every single month for your payment. So it starts at £3 a month and goes all the way up to £45 a month. And every single tier has different things to offer for your money, whether you're getting postcards from me from all over the world on my travels, whether you're getting exclusive access to different content, such as audio diaries recorded live on the trail. You can join my fireside events, which are essentially group coaching sessions to help us to stay motivated and empowered throughout the season and so much more so head over to patreon.com forward slash spend more time in the wild to find out more and if you can't subscribe monthly you can always make a one-off donation through paypal and 100 of those funds will go straight back into the creation of new content thank you so much for listening now let's get back to this film all about the kit that i used in 2023 kicking off this next chapter with the clothes that kept me warm and dry and snug as a bug it would be daft to pretend that my hat is not in the favourites list. Of course it is. I live in this hat. I've had it since I was 13 years old and it's basically a part of me. But when it does get cold, I do like to swap it out for this. Which is a woolly hat. So this is a hat made by Black Yak. So it's yak wool. Um, it's made entirely sustainably. I love it so much. I wear this all the time. I'm wearing it in the house every single day at the moment because it's freezing. Um, but this hat, uh, yeah, is by Black Yak. There's nothing to say. I'm withholding going, oh, Black Yak Attack hat, which is what I call it. Um, oh, and I just love yaks. Who doesn't love yaks? I love yaks. Yaks make me happy. So yeah, very good hat from Black Yak. Now, it would be pretty terrible of me to run through a favourite kit list and not mention the Stay Wild t-shirts that I sell on my store. Yes, this is a shameless plug, but it is for a good reason, my friends. So I have sold thousands of these all the way across the world. My favourite sending location is still Svalbard. That's just someone bought this from Svalbard. Whoever you are, thank you. That is so cool. But never mind that journey. They are just great t-shirts. So they, again, they don't retain odour. They're super fast drying they're wicking um 
they they haven't they don't stretch over time i literally live in these shirts i take one shirt no matter how long the trail is so the kungsladen three weeks same shirt did not smell how is that possible i don't know <laughs> um but i love these shirts the only thing i find is every now and then i do snag one and then the the fiber thing pulls out but honestly really really great shirts i've now done them in different colors so we had plum sale uh, at the end of 2023. Um, I've done electric orange as well. And basically twice a year, I'm gonna be doing a sale of a limited edition color. But yeah, these Stay Wild t-shirts, again, I wouldn't hike in anything else. I mean, it is brand representation, but they're just so good. <laughs> if you've ever seen me hiking, which I presume you have, as that's why you're on this video, um, I only ever hike in these Montane Terra pants. They're super lightweight. Uh, and I absolutely love them. You can vent them, I roll them up so that I can wear them as shorts. I, I live in these guys. Uh, they've been super hard wearing and they're just, they're just great. This is not a review of the trousers. I'm gonna try and <laughs> draw the line at telling you all of the features. But I bought my first pairs back in 2018 and I've been using them ever since. But 2023 was the year <laughs> that I somehow, somehow managed to rip both pairs in the groin area. So basically I'm climbing up and then and I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> so they split. I tried to stitch it back together. I am certainly not a stitching person and have made the situation much worse. So I bought another pair off of Vinted, so secondhand. Um, for me, one of the best things you can do for the planet is to buy secondhand and not new. So I really recommend Vinted for outdoor kit. Um, basically, it's an app on your phone. And uh, yeah, so now I have two broken pairs and one good pair. So these are Montane Terra pants, which I will continue to love and cherish on the trail um, for probably ever. I hope they never stop making them. But in addition to these pants, when things got a bit colder on Mont Blanc, for example, it was minus 25. And right back at the beginning of the 2023 year, uh, during a trip to the north of Iceland, I used a different pair of trousers. So these are the ones I used. I actually don't know the name of them, but they're by the North Face and they are like lined. They've kind of got this nice furry felt stuff inside. So they're soft shell trousers. Um, they actually absorbed far more water than I expected them to, but they were super, super fast drying. As you can see, they packed down reasonably well, um, but they were just really great for super cold expedition stuff and for standing around doing photography like the northern lights or on a boat um, filming and photographing whales so yeah I, I love these trousers i keep forgetting that i have them probably should be wearing them right now because it's freezing um but yeah north face who knew me and you look at that as well as my Patagonia Nano Puff jacket, when things were a little bit colder, again, on Mont Blanc, um, or at the beginning of the season when I was in uh, Scotland, I actually used this jacket. So this is a down jacket by Rab. It's one of their most classic pieces. It was gifted to me as well in 2022, but I don't work with Rab. And the main reason why I wanted to talk to you is, Yes, about this piece of kit, it's warm, it's great. I'm cold now, I want an excuse to put it on. Uh, but it's also because they are such an ethical company. They're doing their absolute best to become climate neutral, or sorry, carbon neutral for the climate. Um, they responsibly source all of their down. They even make a lot of their down products here in the UK. So if you are UK based and looking to buy an ethical uh, product, then Rab is definitely one of the ways to go. They've obviously got backpacks, down jackets, trousers, they have the whole shebang. Um, and yeah, take a look. And I think, you know, a lot of these things are not very cheap. That's definitely one of the big question marks. But if you're paying for a product that is not costing um, the planet, then to me, that's money well spent. Sticking with feet, one of the things I've never particularly had any kind of loyalty with is socks. I just wear hiking socks until they wear out and then I buy some more and I see how they go. But last year I did struggle with blisters for the first time in a long time. And I really, resolved that socks were the problem. And so I looked into it and I came out of the supermarket, it wasn't the supermarket, of some shop in Clamberis with these darn tough socks. I'm wearing them on my hands because I have cold hands right now <laughs> and I'm using this as an opportunity. Um, but basically they're an American brand. They're very common. 
commonly used in America. Uh, they're definitely up and coming here in the UK. They make really great hand warmers, but additionally, <laughs> they're super great for feet as well. I have found them really, really comfortable. I am very lazy when it comes to changing my socks. I probably only change them every sort of five or six days when I absolutely have to on the trail. Uh, I do wash them. And so these socks have withstood multiple days uh, of use with the odd bit of scrubbing and washing. They've been fast drying. They've been reasonably odorless. I mean, nothing can, you know, <laughs> help my feet <laughs> on the trail. Um, but no, I've, I've really enjoyed them. I like the colors that they've got. There's different weave densities. So you've got sort of um, light, medium and thick. And yeah, darn tough socks. I've got a couple of pairs. They're jolly expensive to sound as English as I possibly can. Um, but no, they've been worth the money and I will continue to use them until I can't. It's probably my favorite part about making these videos is just throwing things away. Treat your kit with respect, kids. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I moved away from using the Salomon Authentic LTR GTX boot. They always have such long, complicated names. I don't know what that is about. To the La Sportiva TX4 Mid GTX boot. Also a really long name. 2023 saw me eat into my third pair of these boots. Again, I have walked thousands of miles in them. They've proved really comfortable. The sole has been super hard wearing. They're very light for what they really have to offer. And the only thing I'd say is they're not super fast drying. Hence why a lot of folks tend to prefer trail shoes. That's just not the system for me. I like to have a good sturdy boot. And yes, I wear barefoot shoes throughout day-to-day -day life, but when I'm multi-day hiking, having a good sturdy boot to protect my ankles, protect my soles, and protect my toes from bangs and boshes against rocks is super, super handy. So the La Sportiva TX4 Mid GTX boot will definitely be hiking many more miles with me into 2024. The final piece of clothing I want to talk about is my Rab Borealis jacket. And this is the jacket I'm wearing in this video. I have both a yellow and an orange one. The yellow I now use much more for cycling and the orange for hiking, but they are really lightweight. They pack away super nicely. They're windproof. They dry really fast. They have a hood. They have pockets that are confusing because they're backwards, but it has pockets. And ultimately, this has just, again, been another really reliable piece of kit to take the edge off a cold morning or when the wind comes in and you're in the mountains. So that is the Rab Borealis. Next, let's look at a bunch of accessories I've been using this year, from the small to the big. But just before we go there, I want to say I'm not going to be covering my camera kit in this video. You'll find that in another video coming very soon where I talk all about my camera kit that I use on the trail. So this year I have struggled with head torches. So the first head torch I ever used was the Petzl Actic, um, which has been a really great, reliable torch. Um, but I wanted something a little bit more substantial. So a mate of mine gave me a different Petzl one, which basically had an adjustable beam. It's very commonly used by mountain leaders. Then I wanted something a little bit lighter. So I went for the super, super light, um, was it, it begins with B. Anyway, another head torch. Uh, and, and basically I've just found most of my head torches to be really unreliable. The rechargeable ones are basically are playing a game with me. I'm absolutely certain of it. And um, choosing when they want to work and when they don't. And that's a big problem because most of my power needs to be for my camera equipment. Um, so having to charge my head torch sporadically has been very annoying. So I went back to the Petzl Actic, really reliable, super great, but not super high lumination. That's a good word. I love that word, illumination. Um, so instead, I decided to buy an additional torch. So this is an Ace Beam torch off Amazon um, and it's 550 lumens. And the reason why I bought this is because sometimes when I'm out of service and I'm in a new place and I'm completely in the middle of nowhere, not gonna lie, I get a bit scared. <laughs> and if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I've had a real journey getting into wild camping. It has been a process to growing in confidence. Um, and quite often sounds can trigger this horrible, uh, weird mental state that I can get into. It's not just about fear, it's sort of seeing things that aren't there and, and yada yada, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I sort of thought, well, having a another torch that I can sort of point around and pretend I'm brave with <laughs> um, might be quite helpful. And it actually has proved really helpful. So the nights where I feel a bit vulnerable, I'll have this like in my pocket, in my sleeping bag, 
Um, it's also really solid, so it could be a good weapon at the, in worst case situation. <laughs> um, not that I'm ever really scared of animals. I did have a time on the Kungsleden where I was pretty certain I was going to get eaten by a bear, um, which is not a problem because at least I die at the hands of nature and can be recycled. But uh, yeah, that kept me awake at night. <laughs> uh, it turns out there was a mouse in my tent and that frightened the life out of me. But this very torch was the thing I used in order to scout the mouse out. Um, so yeah, that's my little ace beam torch that clearly I'm talking about this so much it's made me very happy. So that's why it's on my favorite list for 2023. <laughs> right, folks. So this is a Zolio device. Essentially, it's a satellite communicator and it's a new piece of kit I added to my gear in 2023. Prior to this I was using the Garmin InReach for my satellite uh, work shall we say <laughs> um, but earlier this year I was invited to a partnership event with Zolio where essentially a whole bunch of us influencers I really don't like that term uh, were invited to Manchester to learn about Zolio and um, I've been using it this year and basically to, to not beat around the bush and just get to the point. It connects to your phone uh, via Bluetooth and you can send almost like text messages um, from your phone. It's got an SOS button, there's medical support and actually I've absolutely loved it. It has just been so nice, again, when you're out of signal for days upon days, to be able to ping a message, to ping your location to your loved ones. Um, so yeah, I've, I've really, really, really enjoyed using this. The only thing I'd say is that it's not always been the strongest to connect to the satellite, um, so it's had to, uh, I have to put it outside of my tent, whereas the Garmin I used to be able to send messages and stuff from inside of my tent and receive the weather and all of that. Uh, but this is, you know, water resistant, so it doesn't really matter too much. And it connects to the Iridium satellites and um, has been a very handy thing to have on my backpack or in my backpack. I have to say, it's only been something I've used sort of at camp, so in the morning and the evening, and the rest of the time I've turned it off and kept it away. I am beyond paranoid about batteries with everything um, because the filming is my priority. So unless it's a camera, um, most things I just try and keep off and protect their battery life. Um, so I haven't done any, used any of the like tracking features and stuff on this. I've definitely probably only explored about 50% of the features that this product has to offer. But as I say, I've really enjoyed using it throughout 2023. All right, so this piece of equipment I'm about to mention next is extraordinarily random. It's this. It's a waterproof case for my Samsung S22. <laughs> so this is a new phone I started using this year. Um, I have had no luck with phones uh, on the trail throughout the seasons. Basically, I either drop them, somehow water gets in, something doesn't work, yada, yada, yada. I pretty much always carry a second phone with me now on the trail because I have had the experience where I have been out in the middle of nowhere, I have broken my phone and I've not been able to do anything about it. <laughs> I always write my emergency contacts on a piece of paper so I have that separate if ever I need to use an old school payphone, if they even still exist. Um, but no, having this waterproof case has been super, super cool because when um, my Sony needs to go away, I shoot on a Sony camera, uh, I basically, I get my phone out. I also use a GoPro, which is waterproof, but having my phone means I can film other stuff still um, and sort of film landscapes a little bit um, different to the GoPro. GoPro, even on, on the linear setting, is still quite wide angle. And I wouldn't say the phone is, is, is perfect. It's not an iPhone, let's just put it that way. Um, but having this case, A, means I have a bit more sort of peace of mind that water is not going to get into the port when it's raining because somehow it will, even if it's not raining. <laughs> um, but it does mean I can video on photograph on my phone as well. So it weighs next to nothing and it's, it's just super, super cool. It's, it's filthy and really hard to keep clean. <laughs> but yeah, that is just a simple waterproof case for my phone. I really feel like this video is filled with so much random stuff, um, but this has also been legendary. What is this? It's so small. Maybe I just like the small things, <laughs> like my uh, my torch, but this is also very small. So when I was in Chamonix uh, preparing for Mont Blanc, I spotted this sun cream stick. <laughs> Look at this. And it's, it's so little and it sits in my hip pocket and I just go, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Just like that, bish bash bosh. <laughs> so this sun cream stick is, is sports ready. So it's like sweat proof. It's a 50 plus factor. 
uh, sun protection factor and honestly it's just great there's nothing much to say about that sun cream is important protect your skin folks and get cool things like this the only sad thing about it is it's plastic um, but I am actually going to write to Decathlon and see if they can refill it for me because that would be very kind of them indeed. Staying hydrated is something that is absolutely essential for all of us on the trail. But for me, especially, I struggle hugely with crippling migraines and my back injury can really uh, accentuate that. So I have to drink probably... <laughs> five, six, seven liters, depending on the day. Um, not probably, that is what I have to drink. Let's not, you know, pretend <laughs> otherwise. And uh, this year I've been using a Catadyne B3 water filter. So this is the one liter. You can also get it in 0.6 of a liter as well. And uh, I, I've absolutely loved this thing. I use it uh, when I travel, I use it on the trail. Um, I literally, I get water out of airport taps, which you're not supposed to, but I refuse to buy plastic bottles. Um, I, I, I use this all the flipping time. I have had to buy a couple of extra bladders because uh, I've somehow managed to puncture them. Um, but the filters themselves have been sound. They're supposed to be able to filter a thousand liters of water. I've not got anywhere near that. But I've, they also, the reason why I switched to these guys is they have a really good flow rate. So previously I was using the Sawyer Micro Squeeze and it was so slow. And having Reynolds syndrome means I lose circulation of my hands a lot if they get cold and takes a long time to bring it back. So I experimented with the Catadyne. It's much quicker, much more reliable. And I just love the process of using it. It's so easy and you can even just use it as a water bottle as well. So that's that one, Catadyne B3 water filter. I debated whether or not to talk about food in this video uh, because I don't want anything to come across as, oh, this is what I eat, this is what I don't eat, uh, nutritionally, anything like that. But I am plant-based and finding good quality food for the trail is really important to me. So there's a couple of products basically I wanted to mention. So I've used a lot of tent meals this year. So I do work with tent meals and you can use a discount code to get them slightly reduced in price. All the information is down in the description below. This is not a plug though. The reason why I'm telling you about tent meals is because I fundamentally love them. So they have probably the least amount of packaging of any of these meals that you can cook on the trail, which is super, super cool and obviously better for the planet. Um, but then, as I say, being plant-based, they are super nutritious as well. So you can get the breakfasts and the dinners in 500 calories or 800 calories. They're so flavy, F flavy, <laughs> flavy. That's an amazing word. Um, they're so flavoursome. Uh, my personal favourite is the Moroccan uh, evening meal. Just absolutely love that. And um, I just find them really, really comforting and, and nice to eat. Sticking with the theme of food, uh, something else I've been trying to figure out over the last few years is how I can have nice coffee. <laughs> so never mind the coffee bags and the coffee products. I am somebody that does add milk to coffee. Um, usually when I'm at home, it's soya or it's oat milk. And I didn't want to just buy powdered milk um, that's from um, an animal product. So I found a couple of years ago, actually, granted, um, this coconut merchant coconut milk powder. And I buy this in bulk now because I get through so much of it. But basically in here is coconut milk powder and I put it in a little tiny Nalgene thing and that's my milk that I use in my morning coffee. Um, I use it in tea and then also sometimes I just drink it by itself with hot water and it's almost like a hot chocolate without the chocolate. <laughs> that was a really bad analogy. Hot coconut milk. <laughs> um, but it's just really great. It's, again, it's got high calories in it, um, high fat. So you're restoring some of the fat that you're, you're losing throughout the day. Um, and of course, entirely plant-based as well. Another super neat product that I have discovered this year. Um, it's just, oh my gosh, again, I buy these in bulk. So this is called the Key Diet Flavoured Fibre Drink Mix. So this is Orange Twist. So essentially it's just powdered cordial. Now I do find drinking water on the trail sometimes quite difficult. I've already mentioned I have to drink a lot, um, but, but adding a little bit of flavoring, it just helps me to drink more, uh, particularly where I need to guzzle as much as I possibly can when it's cold. So this stuff, I basically, I either take the entire thing or I take sort of half of this in as another small Nalgene um, and you just add a little bit to your water bottle, you shake it up and then bish bash bosh, you've got flavored water. It's super light um, and I just really, really enjoy using this stuff. So that's been a really cool discovery of this year and um, I will continue using this into the future to come.
Oh my gosh, I feel like I have covered a lot of ground in this video. <laughs> my brain is fried, but my body is frozen. But I have to say, I've really enjoyed making this uh, video because it's super nice going back through and thinking about all of the small things and the big things that equals together a successful, comfortable trip. And, you know, it is unusual that I change things out in my, um, my gear setup, but, you know, when I do, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't touched on technology. I haven't touched on camera stuff, which is a huge part of what I do and what I carry. It makes up most of the weight of what I carry. Um, but that is in a separate video, which is all about technology and camera stuff. Um, but no, I hope this has been insightful and shed a little bit of light onto the stuff that I take with me on the trail. It is unusual that I change my kit out. Um, usually when something works, I stick with it because it's reliable and reliability is a huge, hugely important factor for me with, with kit on the trail. Um, but I would like to make one of these videos at the end of each year, I think. Sort of talking about what's worked, what hasn't worked, and just having a little bit of reflection time and sharing that information with you. So if you've enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, please let me know down below in the comments. Um, hit like, hit subscribe and the notification button, which is the bell. Um, if you click that, you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. Um, please share my videos with anybody who you know needs some inspiration to get outside and have adventures. And if you want to do even more, make sure you follow me on socials, especially Instagram. Head over to my website, which is spendmoretimeinthewild.co.uk. Subscribe to my newsletter there. Join one of my wild walks up and down the UK, also on the website. Uh, head over to my store, also on the website, and buy yourself some wild merch. And finally, you can join my Patreon community, which starts from just £3 a month, uh, offering exclusive content and an exclusive community space where people all over the world are coming together and sharing their adventure journeys. Right, folks, I need to go and get warm. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. I'll see you soon.